Jimmy Donaldson went from an 11-year-old YouTuber who grew up in Greensville, North Carolina to a multi-millionaire with a YouTube channel with over 100 million subscribers. Jimmy Donaldson, aka Mr. Beast, began his YouTube career doing absurd challenges like counting to 100,000, but years later he scaled his outlandish ideas to produce videos like getting buried alive for 24 hours and recreating the Netflix hit Squid Game on his YouTube channel. Although Mr. Beast has frequented different podcasts from time to time like Joe Rogan or Logan Paul's podcast, he has never exposed his beliefs about God or the afterlife until now. So let's dive in. This video is made possible by the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. To support my mission of equipping people to follow Jesus daily, join Patreon today. You are a good Christian boy though. Is it true that your old YouTube banner used to be like a Bible verse? It did. I used to go to a Christian school back in the day. Oh yeah. But now it's like, it's just kind of hard to tell what's right or what's wrong. Like yeah. religion wise, there's so many and I don't know. I believe there is some kind of God, but yeah. how do you know? <laughs> it is admirable to see how devoted he is though. So. Yes. Like he doesn't he doesn't drink, he doesn't do anything. He he's actually he's not one of those people that just preach it, he actually follows it. Talking so, about my boy. Sometimes it does make me go like damn. Like, there's something there. Like, he really cares a lot, you know? <laughs> so what do we make of this? It sounds like Jimmy went to a Christian school. He grew up in North Carolina, which is kind of part of the Bible belt of the United States. So you imagine he might have went to a, you know, Baptist church. He went to a Christian school. He maybe heard about Jesus. But then later on in his life, he's now saying, hey, look, there's so many religions out there. How do you know? And there's a good chance that he might have even responded to an altar call at his church or at his school and went to the front and said, yeah, I want to ask Jesus into my heart. But it never stuck. I mean, I'm not sure if Mr. Beast ever identified as a Christian, but when you look at the statistics in the United States, over 70% of people identify as a Christian. So if that's the case, why didn't it stick? And Ray Comfort, the evangelist, diagnoses this problem as the problem with false conversion. He highlights his problem is largely due to the popularization of a false gospel. The gospel that Jesus has come to make your life better. Fulfilling relationships, a strong family, a flourishing community, success at your job, and a happy, comfortable retirement. But it rarely mentions sin or judgment or justice. And if it does mention Jesus, it's always in the context of what Jesus can give us to give us more blessed lives. Still, some will argue, but Isaac, biblical principles do make our lives better. And in a lot of ways, I agree. Following God's design and the way he set things up is going to be better ultimately. But that doesn't guarantee us a wonderful life according to the world standards. In Ray Comfort's book, God Has a Wonderful Plan for Your Life, he talks about thinking through the martyrs of the faith and how they didn't necessarily experience, well, they definitely didn't experience this wonderful life that people people are often pr promoting when they say, come to Jesus, you're going to get this good life that you've always wanted. You're going to be happy, healthy, wealthy. You're going to have peace, happiness, joy, all this kind of thing. Um, but then you look at the martyrs, man, they were killed literally. Now, the question I'm going to be asking if I'm hearing this modern gospel is, what did they do wrong? Why did they not receive the successful and comfortable life that were supposedly guaranteed? Did they go off course somewhere? No, the problem is that we treat God like a vending machine, like a genie in the bottle that we can just come to to make our lives better. Now, I'll tell you, somebody down on their luck that's having a lot of issues in their life, this modern gospel is a great message. You're telling me that God can pick me up off my feet so I won't experience the challenges and heartbreaks that I'm I'm currently experiencing. That's a great message. I want to pour into that because that'll give me some hope. But then when you look at somebody like Mr. Beast, who's very successful and by all rights, very happy, at least in a worldly sense, what are you trying to offer him? The modern gospel doesn't sell to somebody like him because what it's offering, he already has in a way. The gospel of life improvement isn't that attractive to somebody that has their life pretty much improved as much as they could possibly have. It. At that point, it's no wonder that down the line, you kind of lose connection with these Christian ideas because look, man, I was just in it to make my life better anyway, or because it was part of the cultural zeitgeist, zeitgeist of my town. And so I was, yeah, I was a Christian, you know, this is cool. Jesus said some cool stuff, but you never responded to the true message of the gospel. What made you do the food pantry? Well, so I do plan on making, uh, how do I say this? Or does it sound weird? I just like, I feel like there's a coin flip chance I make a ton of money throughout my life. So like, I hope to one day be a billionaire. And when I do, I do want to do just whatever, start charities, ideally find ways to like start a business that's ran by homeless people and we hire them and they make products and like it's a kick.
business, but just figure out all these things. Nowadays, what I hear from Jimmy is he talks a lot about his philanthropy, how he has these food banks set up and how he helps so many people and he gives away so much money. There's no doubt in my mind that he believes that through those good things that he's doing in the world, that that makes him a good person. And hey, I I'm happy that he's doing that stuff, but there's a big missing piece here. You see, if I could talk to Jimmy right now, I would tell him, hey, there's a lot more to Christianity than just being a good person or following Jesus as a an example of what a good person looks like or doing enough stuff to earn God's favor or to follow Jesus so your life can be improved. All of those are distortions of the gospel. Here's what I would tell Jimmy. Our problem is sin. Sin is anything counter to God's goodness. It could be a desire, a thought, a deed, something we say, but the Bible says that even if we stumble at one point, we're guilty of all of it. It says that in James 2.10. Our conscience also testifies to us that we are in need of help, that we are guilty and we feel the shame. So he said he was having a hard time figuring out the truth in the midst of all these different religions and beliefs. Well, here's the distinction between Christianity and every other religion. You see, every other religion's mission is to get us close to God, to become one with God, to earn God's favor. And all that is done either through good works or meditation or something we do in and of ourselves to bridge that gap. But Christianity is different. Let me bring you into the story. We were standing guilty before God, deserving of his wrath, but Jesus stepped in, came to this earth, fully God and fully man without sin. He lived that sinless life that we could not live, and he died on the cross, the death we deserve to die for our sins against God. He rose again on the third day, defeating sin and death, that if we would put our faith in him, that we would repent for our sin and trust in him, we could have eternal life and have a restored relationship with God. Many people hear this message, and yet it goes through one ear and out the other. We need to ask God to give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Ray Comfort paints this wonderful analogy. You're in an airplane 10,000 feet in the air ready to jump. You see this parachute next to you and you say, I believe in the parachute. I believe the parachute has the ability to save me, but you jump without even putting it on. That's Jesus. We need to put on Jesus. We need to put our faith in Jesus, not just believe that Jesus exists, that he said some nice stuff, but put our trust in him. Many places in Western countries, culture has this air of cultural Christianity. People have Bible verses in their Instagram bios or Bible verse bumper stickers, and maybe they even go to church. But at the end of the day, outside of Sunday, it has no impact on their daily lives. They like Jesus as their mascot because he's a nice guy, because he's this cool Jewish Middle Eastern dude with a beard and long hair. But they don't hear what he's saying. Okay, here we go. One of the most famous passages in the whole Bible, if not the most popular, is John 3.16. Many, many people have heard this verse, but they haven't heard what comes after. So let's read it here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he is not believed believed in the name of the only Son of God, and this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and the people love the darkness rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone does wicked things and hates the light, and does not come into the light, lest his works be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. Friends, Jesus didn't come to this world to just put more money in your bank account or give you more friends or give you a bigger house. And he also didn't come merely to condemn the world in our sin. He came to save the world. And today he's asking you to respond to that invitation, inviting you into his family by his grace. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. You can't merely apathetically push that aside. That is a claim that requires response. And today, Jesus is calling you to put your faith in him. Don't waste another day. And the beauty of receiving Christ is that we lay our heavy burdens down and that we take up Christ's yoke, which is light and which is joyful. And we find our pleasure and our joy in him and not the things of this world. That is a beautiful, wonderful destiny. I'll see you next time, guys. God bless.